tempted. Uh, I had a professor in seminary who was known, uh, we, we, had, we used to have um, Eucharist in the morning before we would eat breakfast. And then for whatever reason that day, things were getting a little long. Uh, he was known to give a sermon that went something like this. Um, Jesus said it. I believe it. Let's go eat. That was kind of his, <laughs> was his sermon. So um, almost tempted Tom to use that one this morning. I was close. It was a big touch and go for a minute. Uh, uh, just a couple things. I uh, want to give you a little trivia that you, you may or may not know. Uh, the picture on the front of your bulletin is actually from inside the church somewhere. Uh, we're not going to have a scavenger hunt that you find it. Again, time, right? But uh, if you don't know where it is, it's uh, in the chapel, on the, on the window behind the altar in the chapel, which is one of the original 100-year-old windows from the first St. Albans building, which this is the second St. Albans building. The first St. Albans building, which was on Van Buren, uh, that was torn down, and, and then this church was built, and some of the original windows were taken from that church and put here, and one of them uh, is that window behind the chapel altar, and that's where it has that Lamb of God frame in it. And I always think that those windows are beautiful and colorful and uh, like to show them off when we can. The Lamb of God is the title John gives Jesus. And um, John knows something a little different about Jesus than anyone else does, because when he sees him, he says, that's the Lamb of God. And no one else is calling Jesus that. Now, you've probably heard Jesus referred to as that. Uh, you might um, have seen pictures or their songs or, you know, there's a whole bunch of uh, stuff around Jesus being the Lamb of God. But John the Baptist comes up with that title when he sees Jesus at the very beginning of his ministry. He recognizes him as the Messiah, and he said, that's the Lamb of God. And no one really is sure what he means by that, but John understands Jesus' uh, messianess as something different than anyone else does when he says that's the Lamb of God. Now, you and I might think of lambs a certain way, maybe cuddly or soft, cute, gentle. So maybe we might think that John's calling Jesus God's kind of gentle lamb or something like that. We hear it through our ears, the lamb of God. He's going to be gentle, right? He's not ferocious. He's going to be gentle. But that is not what John means. Because lambs in John's time, in Jesus' time, for the Jewish people, you have a different idea about lambs. They're not thinking of soft and cuddly. Lambs, they're thinking of forgiveness and freedom. Those two things, forgiveness and freedom. So let me explain. Uh, the first thing they would think about with lambs is sacrifice, because this is how it worked in their world. You know, if you uh, went to the temple for the forgiveness of your sins, for, to offer the atoning sacrifice, you probably, if you were in a middle class type of person, would offer a lamb. Now, if you were really well off, you would offer a heifer, a cow. Right? But they were expensive. So most people couldn't afford cows. So lambs were kind of the sacrifice of the middle class. And this isn't something you could do in your local synagogue or local church. You had to go to the temple in Jerusalem to do this. And there the priest would offer the sacrifice for your sins and the sins of your family. And only the man could do it. The, the dad or the father, the patriarch of the family, could go and they would bring the lamb. And there would be uh, prayers that would be said. And the, the prayers would be to this effect, that the sin and the guilt of your family would pass from you and your children to the lamb. And the lamb would pay the price and you would go free. That would be the idea. So this would be your yearly uh, pilgrimage, right? If you were a family that made a yearly pilgrimage to Jerusalem, we read in the Bible, Jesus' family made a yearly pilgrimage to Jerusalem at Passover or at another feast. They would go and they would either bring a lamb or they would buy a lamb there and offer their lamb for sacrifice. And they would pray that prayer that the sins of you and your family and the guilt of you and your family uh, would pass from you to this lamb. The lamb would pay the price. You would go free. The first thing they would think about would be forgiveness because the lamb is the sacrifice 
for your sins. And then the second thing they would think about with lambs would be freedom. Because the lamb was the meal of Passover. You know how we have uh, turkey for Thanksgiving, right? Everybody knows that. Now, some of you may not like turkey for Thanksgiving. You may be sick of it. You may do other things. But you know the meal of Thanksgiving is turkey, even if you don't do it. That's the food you eat, right? Um, Passover was lamb. And all the Jewish people knew that, just like we know turkey. Now, I don't think it would be of the same effect if John would have called Jesus the turkey of God. It wouldn't have worked. It, wouldn't, it just doesn't have the same catchiness, right? But everybody knew lamb was part of the Passover meal. It was the meal the family gathered and ate on Passover, and you would tell the story that on the night of Passover, the blood of the lamb was placed on the doorpost of the homes of the people of God, and that um, the evil and the destroyer pass by because the blood of the lamb protected them. They were, they were free from death because of the blood of the lamb. So they would think about forgiveness, and they would think about freedom. And when John sees Jesus walk by, he understands what his life and ministry is going to be like before anyone really else does. And he said, that's the lamb of God. He's the one that gives us forgiveness and freedom. Okay, so fast forward to us. Right? We don't eat lamb for Passover. We think lambs are soft and cuddly. But now we know what John was thinking. Right? That he's saying, this is Jesus, the Messiah, the Lamb of God, who brings you forgiveness and freedom. This is the one who willingly right, let all of our stuff our brokenness, our sins, our faults, our mistakes pass from us to him so that we could go free. The Lamb of God. And it's the Lamb whose blood gives us freedom. Right? Because forgiveness isn't really forgiveness if it doesn't come with freedom. Right? It's only a half forgiveness if we're not set free from the guilt and the shame and the weight and the heaviness of the things we may have done. Right? There's a freedom that comes with forgiveness. A freedom from not just the things we've done, but the things that weigh on us, the things that are heavy. Right? The Lamb takes those and gives us freedom. And so the way that they would remember it in, in John's day, in Jesus' day, was they would have a meal. And they would have a meal... Passover once a year where they would talk about all these things. They would tell the story, they would say the prayers, they would eat the meal, and they would share it together and to remind themselves of the freedom that, that God won for them. And Jesus asked the same thing. He said, I'm giving you a meal. Right? It's the Last Supper. That's what he did. He gave us a meal where we would remember the sacrifice of the Lamb and the forgiveness that comes with it and the freedom that comes with it. Because the freedom is really important. God wants to set us free from the things that weigh us down. He longs for us to be free from the weight of uh, our, our past, from, from our mistakes, from other people's stuff that gets put on us, from the heaviness of life, from the weight of, of sickness and, and some of the just unfairness and the burdens we carry, right? He wants us to be free from those. He wants to take our yoke and give us freedom. I remember uh, a sad story uh, where uh, one of my parishioners in a previous church was uh, somebody recovering uh, from uh, being an alcoholic. And they struggled. They struggled so hard with it. Um, they wanted to stop, they wanted to be free from it, but they just couldn't get there. And they wanted, um, they wanted to not do it, but they couldn't get over, they couldn't be free from the things that caused them to drink. So let me explain what I'm trying to say. Um, we sat down one time and he, would, he told me, um, he said, listen, all I hear in my head is this running theme of, my parents' voice telling me I'm worthless. That's how he grew up. 
He said, the only time it's ever quiet is when I have a drink in my hand. My heart broke. My heart broke for him. Right? That's the stuff that God wants us to give us freedom from. That's the lamb's blood to give us freedom from. And I know it's hard. It's not instant, right? It takes a lot of work. It might take counseling. It might take all kinds of help. But God wants us to have freedom from the things that we carry with us that weigh us down, the voices in our head that tell us we're not enough, all those things, right? God wants to give us freedom from those. He doesn't want to see us carry those yokes. Um, and unfortunately, he never, uh, this parishioner never made it to freedom. During the pandemic, it was too much for him not being able to meet and be in community with his groups, and he uh, was found dead in his hotel room. Broke my heart. Broke my heart. Think about him all the time. God longed for his freedom. Forgiveness and freedom. The blood of the Lamb is for our forgiveness and for our freedom from all those things that weigh on us. And uh, I would just encourage you, if there's something you want to let go of today, if there's something that calls for forgiveness, um, that's what the lamb came for. He came to take it. He came to take it. And if there's something that long, that's heavy and that weighs on us, the lamb wants to give us freedom from that. So um, we have a meal too where we remember these things. We, we do it every week. Right? It's one of our favorite parts. I never get offended when someone says my favorite part of church is communion. Right? I, sometimes people preface that. They say, I like your preaching, but my favorite part of church is communion. I want your favorite part of church to be communion. right? Because I, I'm, I'm a human. I'll be inconsistent. God's never inconsistent. Right? He longs for us to come here and to give us forgiveness and freedom. So if there's something that's crying out uh, for forgiveness and freedom in your life, know that the Lamb wants to take it, and today could be the day where he, the blood of the Lamb gives us the forgiveness and the freedom that he came to bring. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.